to talk back. We have put together these talk back videos with the aim of sharing some knowledge to help you make the best possible recovery from your back problem. It's divided into six areas. Some of the ideas we discuss may be complicated, they may be new or different from what you've heard before. We invite you to keep an open mind and consider how this potentially new information may apply to you. We highly recommend that you watch them in order to get the most from these videos. Okay, so a little anatomy lesson. This is the spine. Uh, it's made up of 33 small bones called vertebrae. And these vertebrae are stacked one on top of the other and they form and create the natural curves of our spine. They also connect and create a canal through which the spinal cord runs. In between the vertebrae, we have something called discs. Now these discs are flat and round, they're designed for weight bearing and they're well adhered to the bones by something called ligaments. So they're quite strong fibrous tissues that lie in between the vertebrae. We also have a big thick network of uh, fibrous tissue which surrounds the spine and it's particularly dense and strong in the lower back. Not only that, we mustn't forget the muscles which actually overlie the spine. There are layers of muscles which help us to move but they also keep the spine very strong and stable. So as you can see, nature designed us to have inherently strong and resilient spines. So that may leave you wondering what can go wrong. This graph shows the various things that can show up on x-rays and scans. As you can see, all of these things tend to get more prevalent as we get older. But this is not surprising because getting older is a fact of life. And this process varies from person to person. So for example, some people get grey hair sooner than others. And we used to call this term wear and tear, but actually we prefer to say wear and repair because our body has an amazing ability to adapt to the challenges and stresses of everyday life. And this actually applies to all of the structures we talked about before. So they all have the capacity to adapt to the stresses put upon them. There are certain things which can help the repair and adaptation process take place. Here are some examples of things that can help and things that can hinder. Consider which ones you think would help your body to repair and adapt. And this is a really helpful exercise because these are very important parts of our recovery overall. What is worth bearing in mind is that our bodies really need to be exposed to movement in order for the repair and adaptation process to take place. Without movement, our bodies are not stimulated to repair and recover. So let's go back to our graph. There's something different about the people in this study from you. Any ideas? So this was actually a study of people without back pain. So these findings were on scans of people who have no back problems at all. So these are not the signs of back pain, nor are they signs that you'll get back pain in the future. You could say that they are the natural signs of ageing. People with back pain may have more of these signs, but they're probably less important than we used to think. So this study, and many others like it, have made us rethink our approach to back pain. So instead of looking at very simple anatomical causes of back pain, we're looking at actually a bit more about what pain actually is and understanding that better. We're going to cover that in the next section. So that concludes today's episode. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.